Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this game to the com video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD and their partners in Ventec, because the companies have jointly collaborated to produce the One Petaflop Project 47. Then, on the same subject of AMD, we'll talk about RX Vega, but in a different light. The company are being reported to be slowly reducing emphasis on Crossfire and instead focusing more attention on single card solutions. Then we'll move over to the Titan XP cards from NVIDIA because the company are releasing new drivers which improve performance in certain professional applications by up to three times. This of course is to counter the various RX Vega cards as well as the Frontier Edition cards from AMD. And finally... NVIDIA are also announcing various external GPU solutions designed for laptops and this allows both Quadro and also the Titan XPs to be easily hooked up to those devices and basically you can do your work on the go. With that said, let's start out with AMD and the petaflop uh, performance of the Project 47 massive computer platform, massively parallel computer platform, excuse me. So what is this? Well, Project 47 uses new P47 and AMD Epic CPUs and Instinct GPUs, and they've basically amalgamated them and combined them for one petaflop of performance. Now, just for clarity's sake, we're not talking about 16-bit precision here when we're talking one petaflop. No, 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 no. This is full 32-bit precision which means two petaflops at 16-bit precision with the Vega architecture, which is absolutely nuts. So how does this work? Well, there are 20 2U P47 systems. Each of these house a single Epic 7601 processor and four Radeon Instinct MI25s. This means when you combine half a terabyte of memory for each machine, as well as a 100 gigabit Infinity Band router, which is built into the rack, you have the ability to pretty much process whatever the hell you want. So you could do virtualizations, machine intelligence, you could pretty much calculate the birth of stars or the death of the universe, my friends. It is totally up to you. Uh, basically, AMD are touting this to offer a better performance per watt and performance per dollar ratio to any other machines which are on offer, but... We'll have to wait and see until these machines really go on sale, until they're tested, of course, thoroughly, to really know if this is accurate. Speaking of AMD, but in a very different light, AMD are phasing their Crossfire technologies, I wouldn't say out, but they're, they're pushing them kind of to the back burner. Now, why is this? Well, it's according to AMD, who were speaking to Gamer Nexus, to really push their attention, to really push their focus on single graphics cards. And, you know, they've only got a finite amount of resources. So with the launch of new architectures and, of course, only a certain amount of people to work and drivers, that type of thing, they would rather try to, well, essentially optimize what they can for the largest number of people. Now, they're not the only ones to do this. NVIDIA, of course, did this with uh, Pascal. In fact, back in early Maxwell, or even before that, Kepler, for example, there was certainly an emphasis. If you were just to peruse the verbiage on NVIDIA's website, you would notice that the verbiage very much pushed, hey, you can get much better performance if you had two of these cards. This very much mirrored what AMD did with the launch of Polaris and RX 480s. Basically, they, they touted the cards as being better value than a GTX 1080, possibly even a better value than a GTX 1070 in terms of price performance. Of course, you and I both know that that doesn't necessarily equate to accuracy. For example, some games just scale like crap when it comes to multi-GPU. Others need patches several weeks later, and others just never get those patches, and others just scale like crazy. You can almost get uh, a like-for-like -like comparison. You have two graphics cards, it's almost twice the performance. Of course, DirectX 12 does offer multi-GPU solutions, which, along with uh, Vulkan as well, might I add, these allow multi-vendor solutions. So, for example, if you've got, let's say, an R9 390 and a GTX 780, you could probably put those together quite happily. The problem is, as we all know, 
it does require work on behalf of the developer. It requires, well, you know, testing. And it's, it's just not something that the average user is going to utilize. The other thing, and possibly the most obvious out of all of these, because companies only have a, sign, a, a finite amount of resources when it comes to optimizing drivers and so on, it's like, yeah, okay, if you've got a 4K screen, it sucks because... If you are in a 4K monitor, I don't care what graphics card you've got, and this includes a GTX 1080 Ti, you're not going to get 60 frames per second in all games. It's basically impossible if you start ramp, uh, ramping up all of the quality settings. Yes, most games you will probably be able to hit the 60 FPS mark, but uh, I'm doubtful if you really start cranking up anti-aliasing or really pushed in-game settings. And in a couple of months, three months, six months, if you've got a GTX 1080 Ti, probably not. And obviously, higher refresh rate monitors, for example, 144 hertz or even higher, combine that with a 1440p resolution or a widescreen resolution, and you can, or ultra widescreen resolution, excuse me, you can start to see how GPUs just would not be able to keep up with that. Therefore, that's when people opt to go multi GPU, but According to representative AMD, they're not phasing it out. They're not stopping you from putting these uh, cards together, but they're going to put less emphasis on it. If I had to make a prediction, it is probably that they're going to start pushing it for hardware only. So that would probably mean Infinity Fabric somehow or another. We all know that with Navi, it is being touted to offer scalability. What scalability means, I don't know. The other option, of course, is DirectX 12 and other other developers will have to just basically take the mantle, if you excuse the pun. But whether that's going to be a thing or not, I don't know. It's a bit of a shame because two RX Vega 56 could actually be a really good uh, price value proposition. But it looks like AMD are not necessarily willing to do all of the work themselves, which is fair enough if they don't feel that that's where the market's going. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. All right, so we've talked a lot about AMD. Now let's move on to NVIDIA. So we're going to start things out with Titan XP. Some new drivers have really been released, actually, and I'm going to read this out verbatim. Our latest driver, available today, delivers three times more performance in applications like Maya to help you create and design faster than ever before. So what this basically means is now the cards are much more able to compete with, let's say, uh, Vega Frontier Edition. In short... This is to offer certain professional features that you would have traditionally seen in Quadro, but for the Titan XP range of cards. A couple of things. Firstly, good for NVIDIA for doing this, but also I don't necessarily pat NVIDIA on the back and say, well done there, chappy, because obviously this is not out of the goodness of their heart. This is, well, I'm going to shock you here to basically get your money, because obviously... Titan XP technically in gaming performance is faster than Radeon RX, oh sorry, Radeon uh, Vega Frontier Edition. But if it falls behind for professionals, creative professionals in, let's say, Maya, what are you going to go with? Yeah, okay, you'd probably prefer those higher frame rates in, as they give an indication of Battlefield, sure. But if your work suffers, of course, you're probably going to go with. RX, uh, sorry, with Vega, unless you really can push the boat out and go with Quadro and perhaps also another different uh, computer entirely for, you know, gaming. That's fine if you can afford that, but most people really, A, it's a pain in the ass to do that because if you're waiting for something to export or you just want, you know, to alt-tab, play for half an hour and just go back to what you were doing, then obviously having just one PC, one, you know, work in, one work environment, especially if you've got hooked up to a nice screen already, it just makes a lot more sense. So I'm happy. This is what I keep saying to everyone. Competition is awesome. And I would say that for if AMD were in the front and, and and NVIDIA were just like trying to catch up, I would say awesome. Good job NVIDIA for, you know, pushing AMD to do better. And in this instance, AMD are obviously pushing NVIDIA to offer a better value proposition for the customers, which is fantastic for everyone. It's a win-win-win. Maybe not so much win-win-win for AMD, because obviously that means that they, you know, the some of the value of the uh, of the Frontier Edition kind of diminishes a little bit. But of course, we're going to have to wait and see benchmarks, and I don't have the Titan XP card to do a benchmark with. 
Anywho, final thing, um, and thanks to Joe for actually sending this piece of news over. Uh, NVIDIA have announced external GPU solutions, and this features both Titan XP and Quadro. Now, just for clarity's sake, this requires a Thunderbolt 3, so you're not going to be able to plug this into like a USB 1 connection, for the sake of argument. I know I'm shocking you. So, this is an eGPU solution, and they're going to be available in September. So what this basically means is if you happen to have like an ultralight laptop and you want to do like rendering on the fly, model work, whatever, well, you can do that now, which is awesome because if, for example, you're taking a train or you're perhaps even, oh, I'm, I, w I was about to say taking a flight, but it's going to be quite bulky for plugging in the Quadro and everything else. But still, yeah, you know, if you're on a train or you're perhaps doing work in an office that not necessarily norm your normal work environment, but perhaps you're on site with a client and your client has said, okay, I really like this model of this car, but hey, guess what? I kind of would like you to maybe adjust this bumper a little bit and I think it needs go faster stripes. So I want you to put those go faster stripes in. Obviously, it's just handy if you could say, okay, well, let's work on those go faster stripes together and then you can make the tweaks accordingly. You can simply pull out the quadro stick it on the desk plug it into your, into your laptop make those adjustments and then say hey how about this and it's a lot easier because then you can work with the person so that's awesome and of course this also means you've got vr content creation as well ai development and everything else that these cards are actually designed for so that's that's amazing with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video quick bit of housekeeping before i let you run off i have been confirmed to be getting an rx vega as well as fred ripper uh, well, set of stuff. Um, Threadripper is probably going to be accordingly two to three weeks. RX Vega, basically when they can. Um, they're not 100% sure on the release date for themselves at the moment. It's probably looking like August late, maybe September. They're not 100%, so they're going to get back to me. This week, I am going to be finishing an, R an, an R9, an i7 7820X review. I have got all of the results. I have just got to write the script today. That, uh, sorry, tomorrow. That will be filmed Wednesday, uh, sorry, Thursday, and that will be up this week. There will also be a crucial ballistics review up this week as well. And I also want to put a too long, didn't read, going through all of the stuff we know about Vega, but in a very different way, in a very technical way. So kind of an overview of the technology behind Vega. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, give me internet cookies. Thanks to everyone who have written over the last couple of days, even if it's not news related, but, you know, just, hi, how are you doing? Very much appreciated. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.